Hello, this is Sue from dragoncreations.co.uk and today we're going to do the coasters in the coasters but I have a plan to make dragon scales in the middle of the second coasters but first we've got to make our inserts so, numbers um, I mixed up 100 grams which is 52A, 48B mine's a one-to-one -one resin then I decanted 20 grams of pigment tint 20 grams of clear one, 20 grams of mica one, and 20 grams of mica two, and then 20 grams of clear two. And my colours are royal blue for the pigment, um, ruby red, small tongue ruby red for mica one, just made blue ice for mica two. Okay. Sprayed my moulds with a light spray of alcohol or isopropyl, oh, I said it, isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm just going to go in with my pigment. Trying to make a square. So make sure it touches the side of the mould. Excellent. Quite chuffed with that one, it's quite square. Oops, I'm going a bit wobbly on that one. Okay, and then we'll go back in on top of what we've poured, just to use it all up. Well, no, we're going to save a little tiny bit for the middle. Just make sure your square calls are the same size. Try and get it in the mould, obviously. That bit's obvious. Wants to go outside, it's decided. Okay, and I'm going to save. Well, uh, put a little bit more in. Literally just want to save the scraping. How's that looking? Yep, that will do. Just a tiny amount. Put that to one side. Okay. Right. Clear one. Make sure it's touching your tint. And we're going to push that tint back to try and square it up a little bit. And as you're pouring it, you'll be able to get a flow. So you should be able to get quite a nice straight edge on it. And then when you've gone round, just go on top of what you've poured. Let it find its own way. So again, this one, just make sure it's touching that tint. Square it up slightly. I'm going on top of what I've already laid. I'll clear one in, a uh, quick debubble. bubble. 
and don't worry if your circles, squircles, sorry, close up. That's not a problem. Right, and if you get any stubborn bubbles, just get a tool and gently coax them up. Try not to scratch your mould, that's why I've been using something round rather than something pointy. And there's one right in the corner. Come on little bubbly. Oh sorry, I'm trying to see there's one in this corner. Square moulds like to hold bubbles in the corners. Coax them to the surface. So even though I sprayed these, they still want to have bubbles today. Got one. Okay, we'll just get rid of those surface bubbles now. Well, keep my lighter on my mould. Haven't scorched it, I've just made a black mark on it. Yeah. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go in with mica one. I tried to get claret and blue. Um so ruby red is the closest I could get to claret. Okay, we're going to puddle pour. So right in the middle. Try and make sure you get the same size squircle. I'm calling them squircles because they start off as circles and end up as squares. So, yeah, I'm going with squircle. Plus it's funny. <laughs> For me anyway. I don't take anything too seriously unless I really, really have to. Life's too short. Every last little drop I can get, and just plop it in the middle, or place it in the middle. Sorry. But my plan, hopefully, because I've tried a few times, but I've come up with a new plan. <laughs> And hopefully we can get dragon scales in the second coaster in the middle. Because we can get them around the edge, yep, yeah, that's fine. But I'm determined, I like a challenge, an experiment, to get the scales in the middle. But I have a cunning plan, as Mr Baldrick would like to say. Black adder that is, by the way. Okay, quick debubbly on the mica. Okay, and then we're going with mica two. Again, we're going to puddle pour right in the middle. And when I do the outside coaster, I will use the same colours, but I will do the blue first and then the ruby red second. And then if my plan does work, we can do um, tricks and tips with the other one. 
once we've got this we can manage to get scales in the middle we can do some uh, half and halves and things like that but I've got to get the scales in the middle first Our mic is in. And now we're going to go in. Oh no, I need to do double. Getting ahead of myself there. Do you bubble in my mica? See, what's happening is the mica has gone underneath the clear and that's exactly what we want to happen and it will also it will also help any um stubborn bubbles that have clung to the bottom right so now we're going to go in with our clear two and again we're going to puddle pour And we'll put a little bit of height in this one. So sorry, I'm going to block you off for the moment. I'm going to put a bit of height in. Whoa! <laughs> 3D effect. Whoa! <laughs> sorry. Oh, my kid. Do you remember those effects? I'm showing my age now. Whoa! 3D. <laughs> Just scrape this out. Now these moulds are not completely full and there's a reason for that because I don't want them domed but putting them in the next bit. And they will take another 10, 10 grams but I don't want them totally domed. Just gonna check my levels. Yes, nice and level. If not just a tiny bit under. Every last little bit clear we can get in. As I go, and then we go in for a debubbly. And that tiny bit of pigment that we saved from earlier, I'm going to put right in the middle. I'm going to put my cup really close because I just literally want it to stay where I put it. I don't want it to move, I want it to sink. And the reason being is we end up, sometimes end up, if our cracks, scales don't totally close up, we'll end up with a little tiny bit of clear in the middle. So we shall colour it. We shall preempt it with a little bit of little bit of tint. So just make sure it sinks. And you only want want a tiny tiny bit in the middle. That's it. Small little dot. Oh I've got a tiny bit more. <laughs> I will get you all out. Small little dot in the middle. Yeah, that 
that's all our resin in and then give a last bubble and please please don't use a torch on these molds these small coaster molds this is a nine centimeter coaster mold they are so thin that you will burn your silicon and you'll ruin your mold as I've said before other people get away with it but you may not and I'd hate for you to be because it's devastating when you melt a mold and expensive there and what we're looking for are little dots to appear there's some started to appear some started to appear here and they can take up to an hour to appear it depends on the temperature of the room and the temperature of your resin so I shall cover these leave them to set overnight and then we shall move on to part two when hopefully my idea might work so I shall see you in the next part bye for now right we're back these are all nice and set I'm not going to demold them and I'm going to use the same colours, blue ice, ruby red and royal blue. But like I said earlier, I've been having a think of how to get the dragon scales in the middle. Now, I've been fiddling and playing and I did manage to get shiny, but I didn't get dragon scales. I got them starting, but I didn't get dragon scales. So I had another think and then I thought, oh, I know something that might work. So I'm just wiping these with um, an alcohol, alcohol and um, on my kitchen roll, sorry. And yes, I had a thought and I thought it's not the surface tension because when I did it shiny, it still didn't happen. So, I'm going to try and do matte dragon scales, but the trick, oh, hang on a minute, I've just dropped something. The trick to it, I think, because we're going to learn this together, is to do it half and half. So, what I'm going to do, no, don't go in there is once I've got these centered no oh, no that's off Is I'm just going to pull the outside edge first because we can get dragon scales in that bit it's the middle bit we can't get so I'm going to split it in half so I'm going to do the outside edge here first let that set up most of the way and then do the second half on the mat because I'd like to see if we can get mat dragon scales I just want to make sure I don't get too much under pour. Okay, so what I've did is I made up 90, 90 grams, and that's 47A, 43B. Then I decanted 18 with three drops of pigment tint, 18 clear, 18 micro one which was our blue ice and instead of a heaped spoon I did a heaped level spoon so it doesn't go up the handle but it's still heaped so it's a heaped level spoon and I'll do the same for um, the second 
because it will be 90 again that we're going to add because I literally split it down the middle so the idea is we're going to treat this like a, a dragon scale so basically we're going to puddle pour everything put our tint down first still take your time doing it trying to get all the edges touching Make sure it's touching your outside edge. And with a bit of luck, it should spread to your inside edge. And we don't need to save any of this tint, so we can put all of this in. Because I made them shiny by good old handy shower curtain. <laughs> I covered the squares in a shower curtain and did it that way, but I still didn't get dragon scales. So I thought, nope, there must be a better and an easier way of doing this. So make sure you use all of your tint on this one. And I am just going to make sure it's touching the inside mould as well. Because we are going to puddle pour everything this time. I mean, this is the easiest way I can think of getting dragon scales on both sets because I have not been able to do it in one pour. So if it works during a split pour, then it's the easiest way to do it, I suppose. As I say, I've got the shiny, the mould shiny inside so we can even do that um, do it shiny so we can get shiny scales but I'd like to try and get matte scales first of all right that's all that tinting and it's touching both both sides yeah get rid of that Now I'm going to give a quick deep bubble. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get in there, but we shall try. And if there's any stubborn ones, we can always get it out with our stick. Like that one there. Come on. Let me come. Don't forget to check your corners and your inside corners. Okay, oh, the one there just spotted it as I moved. Right, clear one. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour it on the inside square edge. So we're still going into the groove, we're going on top of the pigment but we're running it on the inside edge
That way we can guarantee that we've got resin touching both sides there. Okay, so I'm going to go on the inside edge. Because when I was trying to make scales, it would cascade over and the clear would then go into the tint and make the scales. And then again, as normal, I will go on top of the clear. So we're building the, the two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. I punched you. I do apologise. I didn't mean to do that at all. I wasn't watching where my hand was. I am so sorry. I do apologise. Right. Okay. We're going to go in with our blue first. And we're going to go on the inside edge again. On top of the clear. Well, this is going in the middle because I can't get it on the edge for some reason and then I shall do the same on this one oops try and make sure your lines are the same thickness in both thought 90 might be the right amount but I might have misjudged this it might be less than 90 to do the outside edge there okay that's our mica in our first mica Quick debubbly. And I'm going to go in with our second mica. on top of our first.
It's nerve wracking to know this is the right amount. I hope so. I really do. I think the clear is going to sit right on top. Um, might just get this mica in. Tiny bit left in this. Do I push it? Let me have a look at the levels. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. I was panicking a little bit there. We might not get all the clear in because I don't want to take it over. But as long as we get some of it in. Okay. It'll be so funny if we don't get scales in this bit now. Right, quick debubbly. It's not quite up to the lip. It's very close, but it's not quite there yet. So if we do this again, maybe I'll put a little less um, clear one in. I might even skip clear one, actually. Okay. Let's get our second clear in. Now we've got to be careful that we don't want it to go over the lip. So we might just get one run at this. Tiny bit left, but I'm just going to check my levels. Oh, that's close. That's very close. I can't believe how close this is. <laughs> Look at that. We didn't break the lip. I can't believe that. <laughs> I can't believe that at all. I'm even going to put the last little bit in. That's it. Okay. So 90, yep. So I shall leave these to set. And 
um, I won't leave them to fully set. I'll leave them to set um, for about um, eight hours because then I'll be able to pull on top of them again. And hopefully we'll get dragon middle scales. Now that we've filled the outside in, it might be, I'm hoping it should be a normal dragon paw. So I shall leave these to do their thing and see you when it's time to do the next pour. Again, it will be the same colours, but I will do um, uh, blue first. I'll do blue first again. Yeah, we'll do blue first again. Okay, so I shall see you once these are dry enough to pour on. Ah. Right, these are all set. I left them for actually longer than I thought, so they're totally set now. And instead of doing um, pigment clear, mica, mica, clear, I'm going to do clear, mica, mica, clear. So I mixed up 90 grams and then um, decanted 22, 22, 22, 23, just in case we overflow. So, um, I'm going to puddle pour. But I think I'm also going to spread. Yes, I think I'm going to spread. And I'm just going to spread this to the edge of the mid inner square. The only reason is because I still think there's going to be friction there. So if we're pouring on the clear, it should help movement. Because this should be a normal dragon scale, but I've never done a dragon scale on a matte surface. So... Just make sure there's no fish eyes in it. Yeah, let's do the same with this one. Let's cheat a little bit actually, let's use gravity. Oops, I'm stuck it in the other one now. Messy pup. Right, okay, that's our clear down. Doesn't want to go over there, obviously. Come on, please, please, please be nice.
just don't want the surface tension on that inner mould. Okay. Mm, let's go on this one. I'm not going to debubble because I want to get these down to get them flowing. Okay, so I'm going to puddle pour as normal. So I'm just going to do a normal dragon scale and just cross my fingers. <laughs> And maybe my toes. Now at the moment it's just sitting on top of that mould. But fingers crossed, it will cascade. Right, I can see where's my stick? I can see a spot where the clear hasn't gone over, so I'm just gonna pull that over just on the corners. See, by breaking that surface tension, this mic has started to move now. Okay, I'm going to quickly get the purple, the ruby red on. I'm not going to debubble because I want this to move. So far, so good. Right, okay, so we might not use all of the clear. We have to be careful not to flood it. So I will give a quick deep bubble.
So even though I made up 90, which I know will fit in, I might not use it all. I'll just keep an eye on my levels. Okay, so this is the second clear. And again, I'm going to puddle pour. I'm just going to stop there for the moment. I've got a tiny bit left. And what I'm going to do um, is be patient for a moment. Just be patient for a moment. Just let them flow and move and groove. Right, why that's doing that, I'm just going to put a couple of drops of pigment in what I've got left. Which is about five grams. Okay, and I'm just going to stir this up while I'm waiting for them to actually I'll give a mini bubble. See, it's going under in stages, but I wonder if that friction is going to stop it. So let's just do its thing. Uh, look, I've moved the mould, so that's going under the side. Don't do that, please don't do that. Oh well, I'm going to have to be an overflow going down the side, I reckon. I moved the moulds to straighten them up, and I must have... So you moulded that tiny bit there. So that's a bubble coming from the side. So I'm just mi mixing that um, couple of drops of pigment in to what I've got left. Why it's doing its moving and grooving to see if I can squeeze a little bit in the middle. But as I say, I really don't want to overflow them. Okay, let's put this to one side for the moment. How are we doing? Let's have a look at the levels. Right, they are full to the brim. seem to be doing things but then it can take up to an hour for the scales to appear so I'm just going to have to be patient I think and cross my fingers and toes so I will just put a couple of drops of this blue in and then I think I'll put the rest in a froggy mould. I'm just giving it a quickly bubble. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple of drops in the middle. I don't want to put too much in because I don't want this to overflow. And it's just to colour the centre. Whoa. 
and then what do we reckon frog dog or rabbit oh rabbit it is i've picked up a rabbit so let's put something to a rabbit Oh, I might get a frog as well, actually. Let's go for a frog as well. See, these are the little moulds I have for if I make up too much resin or like this. When I'm doing an experiment, I stop so that they don't overflow. Oh, look at that. So, two coasters, a rabbit and a frog. <laughs> then I shall just check my levels again. And I'm going to put a tiny, just literally the scrapings I have left in the middle. So these are domed, but they're not over over domed. They're just about a millimetre above level. Oh, we've got spots appearing, but on the outside. Oh, well, be patient, be patient. Cover them and forget about them. That's what I've got today. <laughs> right, could debubble. Hopefully too much didn't go down this side where those bubbles appeared. It's what you get for moving your moulds. Fans blowing my flame. Come on. Let's give these a squidgy widgy. Make sure their ears. No bubbles in his ears. And with the frog as well, because he gets bubbles in his eyes. Yep, there's a bubble coming up. Yep, there's the other one. Coming up to the surface. I love these little moulds, but they do get bubbles in their eyes and their ears. So they're his eye bubbles that have just come to the surface. Just give them a pop. Yeah. So I'm going to cover these and walk away. And just let them move and groove. And fingers crossed we get scales in the centre. So I shall see you at the demolding. Bye for now. Well, I'm excited. We got veining. We've got some spots. I don't want to demold them. <laughs> okay, let's get on with this. Let's see if I can get the. Hang on, is there any underflow? A tiny bit. I'm just bending it slightly so that I can get the middle bit out because we don't look at that bit either. <laughs> Slight bit of underflow on it. This is hard doing it though, this way around. Got it. Right, I haven't looked, so <laughs> see if we can do the same with this one. 
tiny bit of underflow on this one as well. I can only do this because they're not 100% cured. So we don't want to see that. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's see if I can get the middle out now. Oh, come on. Just trying to get my nail underneath it. I don't want to turn it over and look. <laughs> uh... Oh, almost got it. It's because there's a... Ah, got it. There's a little bit of underflow on the on there that I can tell that we've got to take off. Right. Okay, the moulds are out. First of all, we should look at these. <laughs> I'm a coward. Oh. What do you reckon? Look at the crack the scales on them. Sorry. <laughs> Lots of dots and veining, so that's Oh wow, oh look, the blue stayed in the middle. Look at the size of the scales though. Some of them are tiny and some of them are huge. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Let's go with this one then. Uh, oh, yay, yay, woo. Look at that and it's matte. Oh wow, we've got scales around the outside and we've got scales in the middle. A bit of underflow to take off. That's not too bad. Oh, I'm so chuffed. Oh, well, we've, mm, we've got spots, so. Oh, yay! Oh, look at that. I hope you can see that. Oh. So, the two pour method is the way to go if you want scales in the middle. I shall do this again, and I'll do it in brighter colours. So, a little bit of tidying up to take the uh, underflow off, but they fit in nicely. I mean, that just comes off quite easy. And where it's a little bit coming a little bit further I'll get my snippers on it but I will give them a sand anyway but look at them oh they're so pretty and I will take a uh, photo outside so that you can see the colours but we did it oh. after all my trials and tribulations so all I've got to do now is do it on a round one but we did it. We got scales in the middle. Now what we've got to do is get scales right in the middle. <laughs> Not satisfied, am I? But I am so happy. Oh, well worth all the experiments. Now let's see if I can do it again. So I'm going to do this again. And as I say, I'll do it with bright colours. What colours? I need you to tell me what colours. I need to do this in. I want bright colours, but not fluorescence. I don't I don't use fluorescence because they're a pig to mix. So but I am so happy. Happy dragon, happy dragon. Hee hee hee.